Welcome to Pixel Composer from Point 18 Stable. And it's been, I think, four or five months since the latest stable on Point 17.1. Point so there are a lot of features in this version. As usual, I'm only gonna cover the major feature. I might make a smaller video addressing the smaller one in the future. But for now, let's go through the bigger one. So let's get started. Also, when you right click on the Add Node panel, there's this new section that you can take a look at all the new nodes introduced in the last table. Now, the biggest group of features introduced is the rain marching. In the 3D category, you're gonna see the rain marching groups. And the most important one is the RM primitive and RM combined. Ray matching is the different way to render the 3D object and 3D scenes. Instead of using polygon, it uses mathematic function, the sign distance field function, and use ray matching to render our scene. So you create a new object using the RM primitive, and when you double click on it, it's gonna show you the usual 3D scene. Now you want to create a different shape, is this a property? instead of a different node like the polygonal base because the shape is being defined from mathematical function it allows you to create like a perfect smoothness like a sphere here we have the perfect curvature instead of using the polygonal approximation the nature of scientist hand field allows you to do uh, some interesting modification to the shape like adding the round corner or adding some deformation another very interesting feature with the ray matching is the ability to combine two shapes using different mathematical equations so you can go to the IM combine nodes and now you can select two objects and then you can choose to combine them together using the union operation which will smoothly merge two models right, as you can see here you can also change to subtract to subtract one shape with the other shape and this model you can change the texture you can change the color you can give it a texture then we have canvas groups which is similar to canvas node but uh, groups as the name suggests it allows you to manage multiple canvas using a single node. And to enter the group, you can hold shift and then double click. Or you can just click on the icon in the corner here to see that it's basically just a group with canvas node and composite node. What makes it different is the ability to control the node inside using the inspector panel here. When you select on it, you can see that they have the layer option that you can just add new layer, which is basically just add new canvas inside. You can rearrange the layer. Right, and you can select the layer and draw. Another interesting thing is that when you enter the groups and you add modifier to the node, right, and then you connect that modifier result to, to the composite node. That modification will also reflect on the canvas group inspector as well. You can even double click on the modification to modify the value directly. Then we have some new filter like a part blur. We have the JPEG compression, the interlace, the blend edge, which is a way for you to create a seamless texture from the non-seamless one. We have the curve for HSV color space. We have the normalized color, allowing you to normalize the grayscale values to 0 and 1. We have the grade effect. We have the tone mapper. And there are also some new 3D nodes as well, like the mesh export. Allow you to export a 3D mesh as an OBJ file. Now, this is only support polygonal mesh, so not the ray matching object. It's a different data. And we have part extrude, which allows you to extrude part out in a 3D object using circle. We have the set of new generation related nodes like the draw cross section, which you can provide a surface to it and it will take a cross section of that surface. Like in this part, it's gonna take a brightness of the pixel along this line and then map it out as a graph. So of course you can also shift the position of that line, you can change the axis of that line. Then we have some new pattern, we have the new pixel sampler, the new MKFX node some new mathematical uh, operation and then we have the scatter part if you make a copy and scatter one part along the other part allow you to create some interesting like leaf effect and then we have a 3d part which allow you to create a part in three dimension so you can use it with the part extrude node and then we have the user interface change so we have the new command palette which can be accessed using control space where you can type in the command you want and it's gonna show up in here it can use to search all the, the operation in the panel, in the menu panel. It can search for the preference. You can even use it to create new node. Then we have an improvement on the pen tablet input. So it should be easier for you to use pen tablet with Pixel Composer now. From the scrolling around the panels and the moving and panning and the view manipulation as well because we now have the on-screen view manipulator for moving around and for zooming for both graph panel and the preview panel. It also works in 3D as well. So we have the manipulator here. If you don't like it, you can also hide it in the visibility setting. 
You can move it to the right or you can just hide it all together. The animation panel also got an improvement. The keyframe will show its value when you mouse hover on it. And you can do control click on the keyframe to edit the value directly. There's an option for you to change the playback to be ping pong mode. The file drag and drop also got an improvement. It will now show the area that the file will drop into. And you can hold shift while dropping a single file, which allows you to select what type of node you want to import it as. So you can import image as a canvas directly, which allows you to edit content inside without having to do copy to canvas and stuff like that. Uh, the graph also has the auto align option, so you can press L while selecting multiple nodes. And it's gonna align the node automatically. We have the search function, Control F, which allows you to search for a specific node. And there's also an improvement on hotkey. So in the preference, you go to hotkey, you're gonna see the new user interface. Make it easier for you to know what key is being assigned to what operation. Allow you to add new key easily. You can change the hotkey directly from the menu panel. By right clicking, you can just click on edit hotkey and change it to whatever you want. Right, the palette panel, the gradient panels, all of this got some improvement to the user interface and some functionality especially with drag and drop and more setting menu. And another panel that got some major improvement is the preset panel. So when you were in inspecting a node, you might see this preset button here. Click on it, you will see the new preset panels. Each preset are now stored a, th a thumbnail. And it also shows the underscore default. So this has been a feature for quite a long time now. If you name a preset underscore default, you can set that preset as a default value. So when you create a new node of that type, it will always default to, to the value that you set. And you can uh, delete or reset the default by just right-click, and then you can just click delete. We have an improvement on the edit widget, like the curve widget. We have some improvement, the view improvement, pan and zoom, increasing, decreasing the scale. You can hold control and click on the anchor point to snap into grid, or you can hold shift to break the symmetry. So you can edit the left and right control point individually and you can right click and reset control uh, the number slider also got an improvement so now the horizontal scroll or horizontal slide will be used to adjust the value and you can use vertical slide to control the scroll speed from 10 times 100 times 0.1 0.01 you can make a very fine adjustment and there's a lot more of this smaller improvement uh, the link to the list will be in the description and as usual we have a number of bug fix i might scroll it now on the screen there's a lot of them it doesn't matter most of them but it just means that the software should be a little bit more stable and in some case more uh, optimized that will be it for today so i might make a smaller video in the future go through some of these uh, small unique features that i added but uh, don't call on me on that because I'm not a video kind of guy <laughs> still. <laughs> Looking forward to that. So for now, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.